Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you using the brand new Zion Smooth 5S that's been sent to me by Zion themselves how to take your basic gimbal moves and take them into an advanced level. So I'm going to show you with practical ways step by step how to achieve them and then I'm going to sprinkle a few tidbits throughout the video as to why the Zion Smooth 5S is such a fantastic smartphone filmmaking gimbal. Okay, so the first advanced technique I'm going to show you with the Smooth 5S with Filmic Pro today is a reveal. Now, normally you get a very basic reveal where people show you how to lock focus on a distant subject. So you're going for a deep depth of field and a shallow depth of field is actually blurred out completely. Today, I'm gonna to show you using the wheel that is on the gimbal with Filmic Pro, how you're gonna get a nice shallow depth of field and then reveal the deep depth of field in the distance. So that way you're gonna have two levels of clear focus. Now, what a lot of people do when they create your reveal is they'll duck their gimbal on their phone behind a subject so you can't see the subject at all and then create the reveal which can still be really nice, but we can go one step further than that and actually create something much more dynamic by using the focus pull system. So what you wanna do is focus on something that's quite close to you, that's interesting. So I'm used to live analytics here for focus peaking, and we can see there's some nice carvings on this dead log, and we're gonna focus on those. And then as we move the gimbal, which is in pan follow mode, by the way, we're in pan follow mode, and we're then gonna move away and reveal the whole location. And that way we've got something much more dynamic, much more interesting, and we're gonna have a shot that looks absolutely fantastic. Now, one of the great things about using this advanced technique is that you can use it for revealing things that are close and poignant to a storyline or for whatever you're making a project on. So for example, if I pull this focus away, hit record, we've got focus on the distant subject here, which is the trees in the background. And as we come down, we can then reveal it's much closer to us. Now, one of my favorite aspects of the Zion Smooth 5S is the fact that its maximum payload is around 300 grams. So what's the benefit of that? Well, you can add external lenses, ND filters, all onto one rig. Now, I couldn't do this with my DJI Osmo Mobile 3 or when I've used the Osmo Mobile 4s, and the payload of the latest ones aren't too different to the older ones. So with the Smooth 5S, it's really nice bonus to be able to put on these external lenses and filters and not have to worry about the gears and the motors burning out eventually. Now the next thing we're going to do now we've got the Sign Smooth 5 attached to the monopod is create a really nice exaggerated push through or pull back. So what that's going to do is with the extension of this monopod pole, it's going to give you a lot more distance to cover when you're pulling it back or pushing your phone through a subject. So to do this, have your legs planted nice and flat and you're just going to rock this gimbal back. I wouldn't slide your hands up and down the pole because that gives you much more room for uh, bumps and jitters in your footage. But if you actually just take a couple of steps back rather than moving your hands along the pole, you're going to get a really nice smooth shot and it's gonna give you a much more professional looking feel as well. Now the main feature that separates the Smooth 5S by Zion to the Smooth 5 is the fact that the Zion Smooth 5S actually has a brand new built-in fill light on the back of the camera holder. So when you use this, you can actually use the controls on the gimbal and then you can control how bright and how dim the light is. Now it's at 5,000 Kelvin, so it's basically daylight Kelvin, and that's fixed. But it's a really handy thing to have if you wanted to do sort of found footage kind of things, like Blair Witch Project, that kind of shots. Or if you want to do vlogging as well, you can triple tap the trigger, that'll spin the camera 180, and that'll be facing you with the light on you as well. You've still got the magnetic bits for the lights here, so you could have one light here, one light on the bottom, and then have the fill light as well to have a really bright setup but obviously that's down to the individual and what they want. Now, a lot of people use the panning motion, which is absolutely fine on the gimbal. So you turn it left to right or right to left, but we wanna make it more advanced. So today we're gonna to actually create a parallax effect with your smartphone gimbal. So what that is, is instead of just panning left to right and right to left, your body is gonna move with the gimbal one direction, and you're gonna turn that gimbal with the camera in the opposite direction. Anything before you fall over, really, really professional looking, and it adds a lot of production value. And it's a really simple, move, but a lot of people don't do it because they think it's too advanced for themselves. And we're going to move to the left, and as we move to the left, we're going to move this to the right, creating a really nice parallax motion. It's like an orbit, really, except for it looks much better, I think. So moving your body from one side, moving the camera to the opposite, is a way to create really nice advanced parallax motions on your subjects. Another one of two ways that this is separated from the Zion Smooth 5 is that you can buy this in white now. 
Okay, so next up, I'm going to show you how to use the Design Smooth 5S in vortex mode. To create an advanced move, we're going to use leading lines. One of the advantages to using your phone in vortex mode when you've got leading lines that guide the audience's eyes into one direction is that it enhances the vision of your vortex mode. Whereas if you're using this in an open space like a field, you're not going to get anywhere near as much effect and dynamicness to your shots. It's just going to look really boring and bland to enhance that movement and that twist effect on the phone. So if I keep pressing through the modes, you'll see this phone go into vortex mode. And what that is, it's the phone facing directly up into the sky and we can then use a stick to twist it 360. First take didn't really work out, so I'm gonna pull further back so you see more of the tunnel. That will give us more time to use the vortex mode in and it's gonna create more of that effect. Smoothly, heel to toe, heel to toe. And now we've got more of the tunnel in and we're getting these trees in, we're getting much more of that vortex effect and we can land right back in the mode that we want. Now it does take more practice because obviously when you're using vortex mode it rotates a little bit after you finish turning so you're gonna have to turn that a little bit before you want it to end. <sighs> now one of the best things about using a gimbal and here with the 5S is no different is that you have the tilt button and the pan button here. So what this is useful for is when you've got a monopod like this you can extend it and put it really high up. Tilting it downwards allows you to get a really nice view of looking at people walking past, subjects walking past. So for this we're gonna extend the monopod nice and long and we'll get this right up in the treetops, as we can see here, and use those as shallow depth of field subjects to then give us a bit more depth of field in the distance as well. So we're gonna go high up as we can, and we're just gonna give a few seconds to each area, keeping it as still as we can and our body as still as we can. So I would say do this about three or four times and then check your shots to see what you're getting because you might get a mess and you'll know to adjust. You might get something really great and you'll know that you got it spot on. So using smooth body motion and movement, the tilt on the gimbal, keep practicing. You can get some really nice high up shots to add a lot of production value and give you a really advanced look to your film or project. I have to say, I really do think this is much more of a filmmaker's gimbal than the DJI Osmo Mobile gimbals, largely because you've got this big focus wheel. Now I know on their DJI Osmo Mobile 6, they put a small one on there, but the size of this makes you feel like you're using a real proper camera and the control of it is really, really smooth and it's not too fast, it's not too slow. You can use it really, really easy. It's very intuitive. And this is one of my favorite features by far of the Smooth 5S. And I've been dying to get my hands on one of these for that very reason, and it doesn't disappoint. Now, when it comes to those low hovering shots along the ground with that worm's eye view almost shot shooting across the floor, a lot of people actually just try and do this and go across the floor. And whilst that works, the problem is you're gonna end up doing your back in, and also you're not gonna be able to have as much control over your shot because you'll be wobbling, you'll be off balance. I'm changing this into locked mode so the camera stays exactly in the same position no matter where I move the gimbal. And that way I can hold the gimbal completely upside down. I can realign it like this and get nice smooth shots like that. Of course you can get these kind of shots on a flat ground like this, but the problem is when you've got flat ground like this, you're not gonna have things passing past the lens. So as you can see, we've got nice differences where we've got light, shadow, light, shadow, light, and that carries on all the way along the ground. So we're gonna use a different lighting here as well to take that shot up another notch and take it to an advanced level. And that way you're gonna have a really nice advanced looking shot. You can have a low shot under slung so you're not hurting your back. And that way you have those nice smooth heel to toe footsteps. And with an environment that's passing your lens really closely like grass, leaves, trees, anything like that in your environment, you're gonna create something really, really advanced and much more high end. The last shot I'm gonna show you, which is extremely advanced, is a wanna. Now, a wanna is a long shot or take where there are no cuts in it. So it can be like Birdman, for example, if you've seen that film, or 1917, where it's all like one shot. That, and I'm gonna show you different angles whilst I do that. So this is how it's gonna work. The actress is gonna be sat here on a sofa on her laptop. We're gonna have a shot of the laptop screen with the corridor in the background, adding some depth to the shot. And then she's gonna hear a sound, which I'll add in post, so it's more like an actual short film. From point A, she's gonna to go to point B, and she's going to be going to the lock on the door here, checking that lock. Then she's going to move down this corridor using these leading lines all around that are guiding us to the door. We're going to go through the frame with the frame here for the door frame itself. Then I'm going to pan to the right so that I don't get my reflections in the windows because this is going to be at night time to be more reflective of me. And shadows on the walls, trying to avoid that kind of thing by angling my body away from where the shadows are likely to fall in the shot. Come down to here where we're going to have a knife or something that she can use to combat whatever is coming to attack her. She's then gonna go through into the corridor here, look through here, then bang, something happens behind us. She turns around, drops the knife. Then from there, I'm gonna go through the corridor, down to the end and show you what's been moved by something or someone 
that is here. Now I'm using Filmic Pro with the Zion Smooth 5S, but you don't need Filmic Pro to do this. I'm just using this on auto focus and pan follow. <laughs> So having got used to this gimbal over the last couple of weeks, I have to say this is definitely the best smartphone dedicated gimbal that I've used. The Smartphone 5, if you've got that already, it's probably not worth the jump to get the Smooth 5S. However, if you're looking to buy a new gimbal, this is definitely the one you should get. You can use this for just about anything, and it really does feel like a filmmaker's gimbal rather than a vlogging gimbal by DJI. If these advanced tips are a bit too advanced for you, then do check out my beginner's tips on gimbal use right here, right now. See you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh. <sighs>